Can I help you? Right in my face? I'm trying to get some beauty shots here, Turbo. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm great. It is officially July, so I'm gonna do the June garden tour. A few days late, as always. Not really. The May garden tour was late, and June was a short month, so I thought I'd wait a couple days. July is a long month. It doesn't matter. Nobody really cares. Here's what's been going on. If you haven't been keeping up with the videos, or you don't watch the videos, and you're just stopping by, to check things out. I have plenty of plant updates to give. I'm gonna start with everything in the shade while it lasts and then the rest of the video will be in very bright, harsh, intense sunlight. So you gotta get the nice shots in the shade while we can. Up here have a Hilo Beauty, Caladium or Colocasia or Alocasia. There's debate around it. I say Caladium. I have two of these over here. They've been doing very, very well in this spot right behind this succulent clamshell that got planted up in a video, I don't know, a week or two ago. This is filling out very nicely. We did have some triple digit temps come in and things got pretty toasty over here. Starting to get a little bit scorched in the bromeliads, but they seem okay. These are all neoregelias that should be okay with the amount of life they're getting. The fireballs are still more green than I would have expected. So I think it was just those really hot temps that started to push them over. These Stribolanthes or Persian Shields, they're starting to do some moving. Even from behind, you can just barely see them starting to peek up. I think that's gonna look really nice when those are up a little bit higher, especially with these lights that are up here at nighttime. That nice reflective purple those have on the leaves, it's beautiful. Just a beautiful plant. I love Astrobilanthes. So shiny, that's mainly it, they're shiny. I like shiny things. Catharanthus, they're doing fairly well over here too. I wasn't expecting much from those. It was just kind of like, oh, I'm gonna toss them in there and see what happens. And uh, they're doing well, but this may still be a bit much of a moist environment for them, which you would think would be a problem for the sedum. That's why I went with lemon coral sedum for this planter because they can take it. They are pretty tough sedums. They do fairly well. The queen palms that I have over here, they haven't done much. I noticed, uh, a few days ago that the drip that I had these running on really wasn't putting out much. What you doing down there? Made some adjustments and added more drip heads. So I think that that should help because I would normally expect much more growth out of these than what I've gotten so far this year. And well, I haven't really gotten any growth out of them, which is unusual. So I upped the watering with those and the slow release fertilizing croton. There's lots of new growth pushing out on it. It's looking nice. This thing's gotten huge, massive. It's pushing, I would say probably six and a half feet would be my guess. The pot's probably 14 inches, so more like down here. Then a sturdy plant though, a nice croton. This planter over here that the Robolini palm is in, this got planted up, I don't know, I think in the video prior to this one, and everything's doing well. The New Guinean patients are starting to push out new flowers as they're starting to fade out their older ones which is, you know, just what they do, but you can see lots of buds starting to show up in there. So those are gonna start to look nice here pretty soon. You can't keep stepping on my feet trying to do a video. Okay, I need I need you over here. You're in front of all the things. Come go over there, good boy. And then down here, get in here without getting a wet dog on me. This is the Pepe La Pom, the Pepe La Pom, pomegranate. Got potted up when I did all these other things. I talked about this plant when I got it and it's starting to get some cute little pomegranates on it. <laughs> Just can I? Would you stop? Get your tongue out of my face, pervert. Someone's being kind of thirsty. Very attention hungry today. It's still flowering. Has its little fruits popping up on there. Seemingly very happy, which is great. A Cordelin fruticosa, which, which I don't know the name or variety. I took a guess at it when I got it. Don't remember what I said I thought it might be, but isn't it pretty? Beautiful foliage on there. Very large pink dragon wing begonia in the back of this container here that's been going through it. But I think that it's just from, from transplant. It just got potted up last week and I think it just, a little bit of shock there because I did have to mess with its roots some to get it into that container. But it's starting to push out new growth and some new flower buds. So it's seemingly happy over here. Have a nice curcuma. What's that? beautiful canary wing begonia in the background. I love the foliage on those. Isn't that nice, that like chartreuse green with the purple from those Supertunia Vista indigos down below. And then the curcumas up there, the curcuma gingers. I like the way those colors go with each other. Not much to report with any of the cordolins. They're all happy. Pretty sturdy plants. The catharanthus that they're underplanted with are doing well. 
The succulent seashells seemingly are good. The donkey's tail, the Ceta morganianum that was potted under there is no more because of Labrador tails. I didn't really think that one through. The That daisy's just sitting there right now. I, that doesn't normally go here. I put just some stems from my sedum in there and it was like a little root, which it, it would have, but also dog tails go flying through this area multiple times a day. And it's, so it's just, loose plants weren't a great idea. It's okay, lesson learned. At Anidia, not much has happened with this one. Sunflower, yes, this is a volunteer plant. I didn't put it here. Go figure, anytime I attempt to grow my own sunflowers, they get maybe a foot tall and then they rot or get eaten by a rabbit or squirrel. And this one started to grow and I was like, I'm just, I'm gonna let it do its thing. I assume it's just a black oil sunflower from the bird feed that I have in the bird feeder up there. Unfortunately, the hibiscus, this thing's been blooming nonstop for the last three weeks in the day of the garden tour. Go figure, not a single bloom on it. That's a seminal pink hibiscus. It has put on a good amount of growth and it has just been covered. You have to take my word for it. It's been covered with flowers up until today, of course been a nice backdrop. So far it's seeming to like that spot too. Like I said, it's probably put on a good foot of growth since I put it up back there and had it on the drip. The abulitin, abulitin looking good. It's doing more outward growth than I would prefer, but as of recently it has started to put up some more vertical growth, which is good because it was starting to spread over here into this ginger and I was like, that's not going to work. <laughs> Might have to reconfigure things, but it's starting to move up now and look better. There's another hibiscus here that also has been flowering really well, of course, until the day I decide to film the video. There's one flower. Isn't that a pretty one? I think the tag on this one just said like yellow, maybe. Eh, I can't remember. Whatever it is, it's a nice variety. The front of this garden bed here needs weeding, <laughs> as always. Yeah, you know, I basically never start these garden tours with things looking perfect. It's not unusual for me to come in and do some weeding as we're going. I like to give a realistic shot of the garden in perspective. Uh, oh, wow, okay, there's a lot of weeds. It's fine, not a big deal, weeds happen. Get the volunteer plants, get some crabgrass down in there. Not the end of the world. The front of this bed here is planted up with the variegated tropical rose sun impatience that were just really scrawny starts when I put them in the ground and they're starting to fill out. I do think I may come in and give them all a cut because you can see here how they want to fill in from the bottom, which is good. That's what we want them to do, but they have all this leggy growth on top. Could have avoided this and had more growth out of them by now. Had I done that when I planted them, that's what I should have done, but I didn't. So here we are. It's a plant that grows fairly well and quickly. So not really much of a setback. Cut them back and within a week or two, they should be nice and full and looking bushy. The Tradescantia nanux are doing well in this spot. <laughs> you can't really tell because all the weeds. There's a lot of new growth coming out of them. There are also a lot of just regular Tradescantia palitas in here, palitas, that are returning from last year. So the spot's fairly warm. They're not hardy here. I'm in zone 6A, 6B. I forgot to do the thing. It happens every garden tour. I'm in St. Louis, zone 6A, 6B, right on the line. If it's in a pot, it goes inside. And if it's in the ground, it probably stays outside with some sort of protection. The Adenidia looks kind of like it's in the ground. It's not, it's in a pot. Big Alexander palm down there goes to a, there's a place here that stores really big house plants. They take that during the winter time. That doesn't fit in the house. All right, that's better. We did the thing. So hopefully that will help alleviate some confusion. The Tradescantia, where'd they go? There, there, whole bunch coming up right there. There were more that were coming up in the front and I hit the spot with some dead brew and I think that I killed them. Sometimes they're perennial forming, sometimes they're not. It just depends on the winter. They're not listed as hardy in the zone six. So that's just kind of a roll of the dice thing. I never plant them with the intention of them returning, but it's always nice when they do. This is a Colocasia white lava. Yes, a lot of variegated Colocasias, so get confused as which ones they are. This is one that doesn't start to have a lot of variegation on its leaves until they get larger. So this one, I mean, look at that leaf. It's probably a good, I'd say two and a half feet tall. So hopefully in the next few weeks, we'll start to get some more color out of those leaves. If not, that's okay too. I think just plain green colocasias are beautiful plants. They're getting some shade from the bananas. The bananas are at like an awkward height right now where they just sort of smack you in the face and keep things shaded. 
but it's that time of year they're growing in a couple weeks they'll be up and over everyone's heads as they're walking through here some pumpkins down here they have a tiny bit of sun scorch on them heat scorch from when we had that heat spell move through this is a weeby little which has a smaller fruit on it and i think the vine's only supposed to get like six to eight feet which is one of the reasons i planted it because this won't take over this entire area you can have some little pumpkins to pick off of there later in the summer more into the fall needle palm doing well the crinum lily look at this thing absolute monster every year i'm more and more impressed by this plant last year i was talking about how i needed to divide this up but i don't i don't think so i don't think i want to i might give that a couple more years this thing is just getting absolutely massive it's a hardy variety puts up a nice tall pink flower spike and i would imagine there's probably gonna be a lot of flowers on this one this year should start to see something coming out of that in the next few weeks what did he thought he was going after his shadow i caught him attacking his shadow this morning yeah, good size very big very full the bananas behind him those are looking nice this area is a work in progress i've been like you can see the shovel right there there's a good amount of stuff going on over here that i'm just getting moving on i'm moving some rocks around i had a big pot that was sitting here in the middle i decided i didn't want this pot sitting in the middle anymore and i put this colocasia pharaoh's mask in its place it's like nice and centered in there has a lot of growing to do but that should fill out nicely i added a lot of nice nutrient rich stuff down there to the soil these are not hardy in zone six possibly hardy into zone six so i thought well may as well give it a shot why not i think that'd be a cool plant to have over here imagine that leaf but a few feet taller and larger just a whole bunch of them centered right here in the middle has its own individual drip that's on full blast because these do not like to dry out they like things nice and moist but this corner over here is a nice warm corner that's why i have the palms over here these are the scrub palms blue stem palmettos sable miners have four of those over here with all these hedichium gingers in the background and then the banana can look at the banana cannas I mean, come on they're looking fantastic beautiful plants big beautiful foliage very similar to the nset morelia the red obsidian bananas but perennial marginally perennial i should say zone seven and up should be good zone six with protection and this is also a warm spot but they I mean, only planted i think two of these over here last year maybe there were three clumps I'm guessing probably three one two three that makes more sense they're getting nice and tall say by the end of the month by the end of july all of these gingers should have 12 to 14 inch flower spikes on them it's a nice orange color so going from here all the way through with that beautiful red burgundy green foliage in the background the nice pink from the crepe myrtles down there and then the nice looking leaves from that pharaoh's mask down there it's going to look really nice i have another hedichium here hedichium is butterfly ginger if you're wondering if you want to look up a common name this one i believe is elizabeth which has pink flowers i purchased a whole bunch of different pink variety hedichiums that were of the same family of the flaming torch which is what these are so i wanted to test for hardiness that's the only one that returned and the elizabeth has it's a classic it should be a pretty easy one to find if you're interested in it. really nice big pink flowers on them i think it's a fragrant one too more pumpkins over here these are what are they where's the tag orangita similar to the weeby little but i think the orangita is supposed to have a more oval shape to it i could be totally wrong about this by the way let's just say both the pumpkins the weeby little and the orangitas are supposed to have a smaller vine and smaller pumpkins on them so fitting for the garden bed bananas looking thirsty as they always do during the garden tours by the way there's like a wasp nest or something over here i don't know if you can see and there's they're just everywhere so i'm not going too far into this spot because i don't, I don't want to get stung up i don't know where their hive is and i'd rather not find out there are a lot of them in this spot and over there by those cannas so i'm just going to no close-up shots gonna be standing a little bit further back for those bananas are just they're being bananas they're looking thirsty shorter than normal usually they had more height out of them by this time of year but i didn't do quite as much with mulching them last winter and uh, one of the bananas in the center you can see how this clump is sort of divided into two one of them fruited last year started to fruit and then that middle clump started to die off or the main stem so things are dividing up say next year it might be a good idea to actually start digging some of these up and 
moving them around and freeing those clumps up a little bit. Cause it's been a good like eight years. They could probably use some uh, refreshing down below and just need to fix that area up. Planted some delphiniums over here. These are delphinium shelbies. They're looking rough. We went through those triple digit temps. So they're recovering from that. The delphiniums don't really normally do well for me when things are that hot. Thought this would be a okay spot for them. It's a slope, so the soil's going to drain well and it's very organically rich. The bananas back there. It's a nice bright morning sun and then afternoon shade. I have the helianthus back here also that I need to do some pruning on. A firelight tidbit hydrangea. You get two to three feet in that spot. I'm gonna keep it pruned smaller. And then the dune grass, which there isn't much to see with it right now because I pulled a lot of it up this year when I was redoing all the drainage that's in this area. But by the end of the season, this should be filled back out. The nice flower spikes coming up behind everything with the blue grass and hopefully like a wispy, airy texture over here with a little bit more color than normal because of the delphiniums. We will see. The Shelby is a cool one. I'm not going to talk too much about it because they're looking like garbage right now. Wait for those to do some recovering before going too far into those. Look at that. Look at it. And adorable. Pineapple lily. This is a Eucamus sparkling burgundy. The sparkling burgundy is, well, I mean, you can see why it's called that. Always been hardy for me. They've been pretty good in zone six. One of my favorite perennials because the foliage is just cool. Very bromeliad-esque and the flower. I mean, come on, look at that. It looks like a tiny little pineapple. There's another one over here that's not getting quite as much light. I want to get, get in there and get a shot of it, but I don't know if it's a great idea. Can we see it? See it in there? Yeah, this is a much larger clump of those. The only thing that I'm okay with, with the center of this clump dying out, is that this pineapple lily hadn't been getting enough sun with the main clump in the middle, and now it's going to get some more light. So should be able to get to see more out of it this year than in other years. All right, I'm very distracted because I'm paying attention to where the wasps are before I get too close to any of the shots. And the Colocasia bikini teenies, doing great, very full as always, and that's pretty much always going to be the report with them is that they're good, nice, healthy, easy plants that tend to just grow and thrive as long as things are nice and moist. This whole area over here is new. Y'all haven't seen this yet. I guess you have, but in the last video there was annuals and things all over the place. I spent a good portion of the week moving things around and tidying up. This is an area that I tend to rotate things through, so things that I'm saving for later projects. This is the area where some of those things go. That's mostly just because the drip is very easily accessible from here, so it's easier to store things over here in this spot. And, well, they're looking kind of thirsty right now. There's Freckles, the Freckles Croton, doing its thing. That one needs a repot. It would stop in water, but the drip's supposed to go off in about 10 minutes, so that should handle all of that. Had some roses and things over here that I moved around. I kept one in this spot at the foot planter planted up with a pineapple and a supertunia vista mini vista indigo akuba in the back and then the variegated hibiscus got a repot as well and it seems to be enjoying life with some more space some more soil around its roots i do think it needs more drip on it though i have one drip head on it and it's one that puts out a lot of water but still it's drying out very 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 quickly hey colby you say hi. How's it going, bud? The banana was in my last video. Got that potted up. Not much has happened with it because, you know, it's only been like two days. Ginger's in the front. This is a Green Mountain Ginger. Has a lot of new growth coming up on it. And it's also thirsty. It's what the flower or the inflorescence, I should say, looks like. The flowers are these little orange parts that come up out of the middle of this cone here. It's coming to the shade. Can I shade it enough for you to be able to see what's going on there? Yeah, and those open up. They have a little purple petal on the inside. It's a fun looking plant. I've been enjoying the flowers on that one. It's a type of costus that typically flowers sooner than the others, which is nice because some of the other varieties, I try them out here and they don't really get going until things start to get cold and then it's just a big waste of time. Areca bomb, just looking lovely and luscious. Love and life have a lot of stuff I need to cut out from the inside. That's just sort of the nature of these palms. They fill out, older stuff dies off. You gotta keep them cleaned. Up, especially when you know you move them outside after winter time them being inside then they throw a little bit of fit get some scorch but then they push out I mean, you get it it's fine it's a happy plant supertunia vista bubblegums looking nice in the front of these deck boxes with some sun impatience more of the tropical rose and the background canary wing begonias further back behind there and then the monarch's banquet asclepius 
Aren't those nice? Or the better shot, the other plant that's on the other side. Isn't that just beautiful? Gorgeous plant. I really like the variegation on it, and it's holding up very well to the bright, intense sun. Hasn't been skipping a beat. Looking great. This is the uh, electric blue gecko, Colocasia. Needs to get a little bit bigger before you start to see that bluey, like, metallic sheen that it'll have on those leaves. But when it gets that, it looks so cool. Sweetheart Caroline variegated red bud, just chilling over here, waiting to be planted. Can't plant it yet, I'm waiting on something, but, but it'll, it's going back there. Just, the, that's the spot where that's going to go. Waiting on something to arrive before I can get that done. So this is, this is a big improvement. If you've been watching the videos, you know what this space looked like. Next week, you'll get to see more of what was going on. Next Saturday's video, I vlogged a lot, like a lot of planting and a lot of things and working on this. There will be like some background, basically just a good probably 35 to 45 minutes of me doing things, and then changing my mind and, you know, doing the stuff that I do. Cena Reflexa over here waiting for a repot. A lot of the plants that are over here in this spot are plants that are waiting for repots we're supposed to have some more cool weather coming up here next week they'd probably appreciate being repotted when it's not bone dry and scorching hot outside it's actually not scorching hot but the sun is really strong so it feels really intense it's only like 90 degrees doesn't feel that bad especially in the shade you don't need a weather report you get it the sun's really <laughs> intense right now this area eh. and i think we'll finish off with that let's go down to the other side want to get some shots of some other things while the shade is still there hey turbs how you doing, bud? You gonna come with me? Come on, let's go. Come down here. Of that dog. Pool planters. Looking nice. The hydrangea paniculatas. These are strawberry vanillas. They are starting to put out lots and lots and lots of buds. This is going to look so cool in a week or two. I, it's hard to tell size-wise from this side to that side. It's probably a good four and a half feet. These things are massive. This is by far the most I've ever seen when it comes to buds on these. That's going to be quite the show. This is a weed. I need to pull it out. I think it's another sunflower. It's just one of those things where I just sort of let it grow and I shouldn't, but then I did and now I don't want to pull it. But I'll get it out of there. These Sweetheart Caroline, Sweetheart Lime, whatever, Ipomias. Doing what they do, filling out nicely. Tropical Rose, Variegated Sun Impatience, looking good. Supertunia Vista Jazzberries. Filling over the sides nicely, actually somewhat too nicely. You can see that they're starting to choke out the orange variegated sun impatience that I had in there. So I need to come in here and correct it. I don't know, it's, it's going that way. It needs to be going this way. It's an easy fix though. It'll take a couple minutes, move some things around. I really, really like these planters this year. It's probably my favorite thing I've ever done with them. I just love the purple with the oranges and the variegation and the really nice chartreuse green that you get on those ipomias that are in there. The ones down there are a little bit different. Harder to tell from here, I'll get a better shot of them later, but those have the uh, Supertunia honeys in them. They have some really good color on them. Major Wheeler Honeysuckle, putting on another show. As far as perennial vines go, fairly tropical-esque looking flower on them. Reminds me, I say it in every video, reminds me of the Gartenmeister fuchsias. Hummingbirds love them too. Gladiums and impatience. This is an experiment. Wanted to see what the light was like over here before I mess with perennials in this spot. So I had some impatience and some caladium bulbs I tossed in this spot to see what they would do. And this is, that's what they did. Going out nicely. The caladiums are doing a lot more growing than I expected them to do in this spot. So I need to come in here and thin them out because the impatience that are underneath them, you can barely even see them. They're not going to get enough light. So I need to do something with that. That is a spider plant, but it's also really just tortoise and iguana food. It's not something I spend a lot of time tending to. I just keep it where the sprinklers can hit it and I rotate it out of those enclosures. Variegated philodendron giganteum, putting on a whole bunch of growth. That needs a repot. I have that on my list. That's going to get repotted soon. I have a bunch of plants laid out here so I can get these two blue planters finally planted up. But right as I figured out what I wanted to do with them, or right as I figured out what I could do with them based on what's been available to get from the nurseries, like everybody's having 50% off 4th of July sales. So I'm like putting a pause on what I thought I was going to do with them. I'm gonna check out some nurseries and see if there's anything special that I could maybe toss into those. It's really, I guess that's neither here nor there. We're just talking about what's already happened here. More plants, 
that are meant to be shuffled and getting repots. They were arranged much more nicely, and then I came in here and started pulling things out to put down there by that hot tub wall and do some other things. So this spot's in a bit of a rotation right now. What are you, are you okay? What's going on? Overall, everything's looking good though. Let the growth out of the philodendrons and the monsteras, stromanthes and all the, you know, the house plants. They, they seem happy. Do not shake that water on me. All this, this was all done back in May. And I think it made it into the May garden tour. It should have since I filmed the May garden tour after May. These are all impatience and there were caladiums. The sprinkler system is busted, but like, I don't know how to explain it. There's a problem with one of the lines that got fixed, but things are still really dry. It's gonna take a few days to rehydrate them. So things are wilted forward. This whole spot's on drip and it has automated like in-ground sprinklers too. We just haven't really had rain. We had a day of rain last week and that's been like pretty much it for the last three weeks, which is very unusual for June. June was a weird month weather-wise. It was either unseasonably cool or unseasonably hot, which, you know, plants don't really appreciate that kind of shift. Looking like July might be a little bit more normal. I don't know. I mean, when you live in the middle of the country, things are never normal. There's always a drastic change between the fronts, north and south. Just hoping for some more rain because, let me just look at it. They're so dry and this is with drip and in-ground irrigation. It's, things are on a berm, they dry out faster. In the drip, like I mentioned back there, this should be going off in a few minutes and that should start to Perk those up and they'll be looking nice again. Laurel hedge, looking lovely. My favorite things out here. The mimosa tree, eh, pretty. I just love this tree. It's really messy, really, really, really messy. There's just junk everywhere from that tree, but it, this is so peaceful. I like the way it moves in the wind when I'm standing inside like doing dishes or whatever in that window and you can see it moving around in the breeze with all the flowers on it. There's just something very tranquil and relaxing about this tree. There's the flowers. You can kind of see them better from over here. Do you need my sunglasses? Will that help? A little bit. I need to get a filter for this lens. That was a really cheap way to try and pull that off. You get it. It's covered in pink flowers and it's looking nice. Looking great. This garden bed, similar situation to the one I was just talking about. Impatience, caladiums. I didn't plant the impatience as densely this year, which I may go in and correct because I have some extras and I could plug in these gaps. When they're closer together, they tend to fill out faster and just look a lot nicer. So I may end up doing that. I don't think it would be a bad idea to get some more growth out of them. That, you know, the sprinkler system. But now that that's up and running, I've, they've like doubled in size just in the past week or so. That'll be looking pretty cool here, hopefully soon. Lots of gingers coming up. These got planted late last fall and I wasn't sure what their survivability was going to be like because they're borderline hardy. They're listed good for zone six. These are Zingiber Myogas. This is white feather. I'm pretty sure that's white feather. And then the others that are more green are silver arrow, which tend to not show much variegation until they're more established, probably a couple years into their growing. You can see the white feather, much, much, much more of a robust plant in comparison to the silver crane, but silver crane I love the foliage on it. But I consider that worth the wait. Begonia, not doing much, but it has spread quite a bit. There's more begonia coming up over here. I expect it to be a little bit taller than it is right now. I'm not sure the spot has the sun for it. I figured it would because, I mean, look at the other stuff is doing fairly well for a part sun, a really part shade location, but uh, eh, I don't know. But we did also have a pretty cool spring. It was late to get going. I forget about that. That should get taller right here and there'll be more of them right here and they have fun little pink flowers that dangle off of them. This is a Begonia Grandis Pink Teardrops is the name on that one. The Hosta Time Traveler. Looking great. It had some slug and snail damage and I put some slug and snail bait down around it and that seems to have helped. You can see it on some of the older leaves that are in there. Doesn't that have a really awesome pattern to it? It's, I know it's really simple, but the contrast between the green and the variegation, then I just think it looks really cool. It's like somebody came in with a paintbrush that just a little bit of green and white on it and gave each leaf just a little tiny little stroke. Hey, hi, you're gonna knock me over. Yucca rostrata, looking good. It's a yucca, not a lot to report. It's growing. Ruby spice clethra, got that planted up last year, did a video on it. It's about to flower, which I'm excited about. Summer sweets, smell great. The pollinators like them. The Ensep morelii looking good, putting on a lot of growth. Not as much light in the spot as I thought there would be. I didn't, I had no idea that this was going to shade things as much as it has. No, those trunks are that full. They spent the winter in a warehouse, so I wasn't expecting this much filtered light over here. If they were getting more light, these leaves would be much more red. 
I still think they're pretty. They're not growing too wonkily. They're still growing nice and straight, so that's good. Sun and patience haven't done much, but again, you know, I keep forgetting a lot of these things have only been on the ground for like three weeks to a month. So I guess they have done a good amount of growing when you take that into consideration. There are some elephant ears here. They're just random elephant ear bulbs I tossed into the ground. They're really just getting going, not much to report there. It's got some sun scorch on it from those triple digit temps that we were having. Back here, this I'm very excited about, the Schuttgart canna. Finally, I got one that is actually the right plant. The last several years I order these and they just have been sending like the president, like just a regular green canna with red flowers on them. Labeled as the shoot carts from seemingly everywhere I order them. This year I ordered them from three or four different places, I can't remember, and I planted them all around and I was like, surely one of these places is going to actually send me the right plant, and they did. Beautiful leaves. I think that this is a good spot for those. I've grown them before and they have always done better for me in part sun as opposed to getting them into full sun like you would with a lot of cannas. It's just easier that way you don't have to worry about the scorch and making sure they have the right magnesium and all that all that stuff that gets overly complicated for a canna. Little stretched out and leggy, so it is not quite enough light for them. The sun also just shifted and the spot is getting more afternoon light than it used to, so that actually might change the color of these leaves and how those are growing. So, I mean, they seem good so far. I'm not worried about them. As you're considering it's only been about a month. Looking pretty good. Bird of Paradise, it's, just, it's a bird of paradise. Not much to say, it's a sturdy plant, fairly self-sufficient. It got a repot this spring and has some new growth coming out. Seems happy. Down here, I planted a whole bunch of lemon coral sedums. I originally planted Supertunia Vista bubblegums in here. This was all in a video and then I decided that I hated it. I didn't want them in there. And I placed them with these. I wanted a nice solid green mound that just kind of comes over, not all the way to the ground. I don't want the ground clogged up with clutter because water needs to drain through here easily. Only been a few weeks. They've done a good amount of filling out. There are some Pharaoh's masks in this container. They're just getting going. Not much to see with those yet. I have another Colocasia here that's just sitting here by the drip that's going to go in the ground right right around the corner. I had a new drip to that pot just the other day because it was one of those things where it's like I just kept watering it and watering it and watering it and it was just <sighs> not having it. So I added some compost around it to help retain some moisture. This spot's similar to the other side of the wall down there. Impatience and, and caladiums. I did toss the super tuny vista bubble gum in the front just to see what it would do. Not expecting much because the spot doesn't get a ton of light but seemingly getting enough light right there's a couple panicle hydrangeas back here which are not the firelight tidbits what are they little lime punch so these are a five to six foot they'll fill in that spot they have nice reddish foliage on them they're not leaning too much towards the light which is something i was concerned about they seem to be good right here again a lot of this was just planted there because i hadn't had things planted there and i wanted to go with cheap annuals for the front just to get a better idea of what was going on for planting out perennials for the area less bedeza Thimbergii, let's put it as a Thimbergii, need to get that staked up. It's it's just all over the place. But it's seemingly doing well and happy. Not much to say with the Thuja. Being a Thuja, finally second, no, third year in the ground, I believe. Got planted up in 2020, so it's starting to do some moving. Didn't do much last year or the year before. Japanese maple bonsai needs a prune. Just gave it one, but the way it's been growing, I think it could use another and then over here the adenidia planters looking great the closer look i just popped those sweet potato vines in these i had vista bubble gums in here it may have been the same video when i was throwing a fit about the vista bubble gums in the other container i was like i just don't like it it was throwing things off so i pulled them out and added the sweetheart caroline ipomias in there but in here otherwise the only difference between these and the others is that there are super tunia vista honeys in there as well if you having a drink which i think go nicely with the purple on the vista jazzberries everything else is the same other than full well, palm trees this end with the adenidia palms whereas the other end the paniculata hydrangeas they beautiful i cannot wait i am so excited for those to open up and start blooming that is going to be beautiful especially at nighttime because they start off with a white flower and it stays white for like a couple of months and then they start to get pink on them but the white is going to reflect the light from the pool and from all the lights out here. So, uh, oh, oh, it's going to look so nice. Okay, are we good? I know, abrupt change. Camera keeps overheating and I just, my voice was shot. So I needed to take a break. Anyways, did a lot of filming this week, like eight hours of talking under my belt. The succulent planter looking good. 
have some flower spikes coming out of one of the Echeverias in the back over there. You can see the sedum morganianums that are in there have started to take root and they're starting to put on some new growth. A bunch of orchids over here as well. That needs some repots, that's a violacea. Fun orchid, it's a type of phalaenopsis that maintains its stem and just opens up basically one flower at a time. Just a really nice like royal purple flower that smells fantastic. It's very, very fragrant, like to the point where sometimes when it was in the house it was a bit much for me outside. That hasn't been a problem. Fun Orchid, got that one last summer, did a video on it. I keep seeing this piece of flower stem in here and thinking, there we go, see those roots? That was fun, did that on purpose. No, I was about to say I keep meaning to grab my clippers and cut that out of there, but I feel like that piece of dead flower on there is probably dried up enough that it will pull right out. But uh, nope, <laughs> as we just saw, that is not the case. That mimosa tree, looking like a snack in the hydrangea. Well, you can't really see them from here because the Edenidia is blocking them. I actually may move the table over this way. I had it centered with that rail right there, which I hate, but there's zoning laws. I tried to take them out and then the pool people are like, nope, have to keep it there. It's like a legal thing. Wouldn't that look better if that wasn't there though? Okay, I deviated. If I scoot the table back over, the view will be better. Be able to see those hydrangea trees more nicely. Over here, bamboo planters. These just got planted, pretty much everything, the majority of things got planted up within the last several weeks. So I guess I don't need to keep saying that. Have some impatience in the bottoms of these containers with some alyssum, the uh, no princess alyssum. Nice lobularia, they're filling out nicely already. Hasn't been that long, maybe a couple weeks, if even. They're starting to take over, spill over the fronts. Summer breeze caladium, love that caladium. Great color inside that one. And then from last week's vlog, fireball neo regelia that I tied into some wire that's there to help hold this queen palm up so that the storms and winds don't blow it over. Yep, just trying to disguise that wire, which you can still kind of see there. I think that that did a good job. It's quick, easy solution, Spanish moss around there. It's a little bit dry, I need to get back on top of misting it, I forgot, for a couple of days. Need to make sure I hit that with the hose. The queen palm that's here, it did a lot of growing. This thing's gotten huge, as queen palms tend to do. It has some more filling out to do, but it's looking nice. It has a little curve on the trunk, which I always appreciate. Work in progress, getting that pot glued back together, but we're getting there. On Stereo Deliciosa, not much to report there. I think this popped out a new leaf not too long ago. Uh, yes, it did, back there, but it's in the back. You can't really see it, but it's a nice big one. Plant, nice big, beautiful leaves. Looks great at nighttime underneath the light. Variegation helps reflect the light back out. Metanella has a, another inflorescence getting ready to open on it. There's an old one under here. It's got its berries on it. Love that plant. Beautiful plant. The Adenidia palm, this planter. This, I think, was from the prior video, or the last Saturday video, I should say. Yeah, I got this plant up in that video, so not much has happened here. I do need to stake up this ginger. It has fallen forward. That's an easy thing to do. Got a couple of Heliconias in the mail, Heliconia adrian. Those are planted in there, and everything else is still just little and sitting still, waiting to get moving. There's a Vinca Cora Cascade strawberry. I'm pretty sure is the name on that one coming over the front. It was looking scraggly when I planted this up, but it's already bouncing back. Has lots of buds on it. I love the deep green foliage on the vinca and the flowers too. So like tiny little pumerias. And they're so sturdy and easy to grow. It's a fun annual. This is a spring fling caladium. In last week's video I was saying I wasn't sure if that's what this was. It had overwintered in this container and it hadn't opened up yet. But that's definitely what that is. And then Florida Beauty. Caladium. Isn't that a neat leaf? That's a cool one. It has some nice, nice big leaves on it. I think that's about everything as far as what's been done. There are plenty of more things need to be done. Bismarck palm. Need to repot that. Same thing with the mule palms. Have two of those. Those are going to get repotted hopefully in the next week or so. But that's the update as far as what progress has been made, how things are growing, which isn't much because it hasn't been that long. Happy with everything I've been seeing out here. I'm loving the garden this year. Things are, at least in my mind, very different this year as compared to years past. There's more nice clean edges, things are more organized. I know it may not look that way, but I'm still working through some things, getting some things moved around and changed out here. It's a process. More color, more growth. That's gonna do it. Comment down below, say hi. I love talking to everybody. What's going on in your gardens? Seeing some good growth, weather being good to you. I certainly hope that it has been. 
And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.